everyone so the dev note volume 12 just released and this dev note goes over all of the new stuff we're gonna get in season one and the invasion update and I'm just gonna go over some of the important parts with you guys and and to share with what I think about the update and the character and the new things we're gonna get this season so I'm gonna go over Haley and I'm gonna go over the invasions and the dungeons and all that stuff so so we get to see some of Haley's abilities she is now going to be the only other ice descendant in the game her first ability cryo round instantly fires a cryo round that automatically tracks the enemy it deals damage and inflicts cryo which deals additional damage along with Haley's firearm damage. This one actually looks pretty decent. So obviously she's not Bunny. Nothing can compete with Bunny, but that's nine adds all at once. So that's not terrible as far as ad clearing goes. And maybe because it is actually a gun shooting, its range might actually be really good. This one looks like it actually does have some decent potential for her mobbing capabilities. Then we have her Storm Snare fires a freezing beam that unleashes a chill vortex around you and knocks back enemies inflicts cryo on enemies that take damage this one honestly unless it does a lot of damage looks kind of useless because again bunny exists and that animation is so long I feel like that's gonna have similar issues to Icemo where he has like the long like locked in place animation and by the time you do it bunny already killed everything so unless this one actually does a good amount of damage to bosses I don't see this being one of her most important skills besides causing the cryo debuff, and that could be useful with the polar sensor that you get from Dead Bride, and I could see that potentially being useful with some of the gold mods in the game. Hold Fury, Haley's movement speed gradually decreases, but her firearm and skill critical hit rate and firearm penetration all increase significantly. That one, depending on whether the skill critical hit rate and the firearm critical hit rate are flat or not, is gonna be, you know, the obvious, like, big thing. So, the decreased movement speed sounds kind of annoying, but this that's definitely gonna be more of your, like, bossing skill for sure. Knowing how the other descendants work in the game that give firearm or skill critical hit rate on the character that's probably going to be a flat bonus if it's anywhere close to Valby Enzo or Blair's buff for firearm attack that will absolutely put her in like at least a tier for intercept bosses which is pretty cool and then we have her four zenith replaces Haley's weapon with her unique weapon anti-material sniper cannon penetration of the anti-material sniper cannon and firearm attack greatly increase and deal additional chill skill damage recovers mp upon successfully attacking weak points and decreases the cooldown the more bullets you have remaining when the skill ends honestly there's not enough information for that to know how that's gonna work so like with that description it kind of sounds like you would want to pair one of your strongest possible weapons like a really really strong sniper like piercing light to do just like the single target damage but who knows like Freyna and Luna both could put increased magazine size on their guns and that will increase the bullets they have when they go into their four so those would potentially be best in slot mods for this unless it works like glaze where you get like a set amount of bullets based on some other circumstances but i could definitely see that being pretty decent if it does enough damage if this skill does enough damage the fact that her other skill increases her crit rate and then this one if it does have a large damage number she might be a really good intercept killer because she'll have really high burst damage from skill like kyle or something and then at the same time her guns will do a lot of good damage because she could just keep that other skill up where she will be able to have the extra firearm crit so she looks like she might have the best of both worlds for interceptor burst and sustain so we'll see the only issue is that yeah like most of the hardest bosses in the game are chill so the resistant to chill skill so yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Clairvoyance might actually need to come into play for this. So get your clairvoyances ready if you want to buff your Haley's on your team if they're going to be doing crazy skill damage, but we'll see. Her kit does actually look pretty exciting to me. She has decent mobbing as far as this goes. That was all nine enemies in the training. You get nine enemies, so... Her second skill, not really doing much for me unless we end up with a lot harder enemies. We're knocking them back would actually do something. It does sound like we might be getting some more difficult content later, so maybe that could be useful in the future, but that difficult content is 
months away. Cold Fury is going to be a thing you just pop right when you get into an Interceptor fight, build up all of the crit and firearm rate, and then pop your ultimate, and then, you know, go back to just using your gun, I'm sure. So, you're depending on how this build up works, though, is also probably going to be pretty important to putting her on the same level as Valby and Enzo, because if every time this resets, even if you have a low cooldown, you have to rebuild up the stack, I could see that costing her a lot of sustained damage, but but hopefully the burst damage with the four ends up making up for it, you know? And a lot of the new stuff doesn't show up till later. I'm actually going to go over that now. I'm just going to skip ahead and then we can talk about the other stuff later. So everyone has a general idea of what's happening. So the invasion update schedule, this is season one on August 29th. We'll be getting Haley and the new skins, the invasion dungeons, the inversion reinforcement. So that progressive stuff that you're going to get from the invasion dungeons and then the invasion season battle pass with the new ultimate weapon. I'll go over that in a second. Hopefully this new battle pass is a lot better than the last one. You know, I don't know anyone using the last battle passes launcher. And then September 26th, so basically an entire month away, we're going to finally get the new Interceptor, Deathstalker, and then the new Ultimate Weapon, which is a scout up there I'll show you in a second, and then some new Ultimate Skins and Ultimate Descendant spawn effects. And then October 30th, so two months away. This is a long time, so it's going to be a while for our next Ultimate Descendant. So all the way on October 30th, that is when we're going to get Ultimate Freyna and her story, some Ultimate Freyna modules, some new Haley modification modules, and then highest difficulty infiltration operations, and then ETA zero, which they talk about up there too, I'll show you. So a lot of this content is going to be kind of far away. It's hard to get super excited about it now when it's literally two months away, you know? Hopefully on the 30th, we get a bunch of Halloween skins and stuff though, so that would be fun. The one I am most excited about here for October 30th is definitely going to be the highest difficulty infiltration operations. Hopefully that is really good. I am assuming this means very hard mode. These will just be the dungeons. So invasion dungeons are what we're getting on the 29th. And I assume those are supposed to be harder. Hopefully they are. The highest difficulty ones, so very hard mode I'm guessing, is going to be all the way on October 30th. I wonder if since that's considered a whole nother difficulty, if we'll get even like higher level guns. If we do and we have to chase like level 150 reactors or something, that is going to be very rough. <laughs> Uh, so this is the new content to be excited about on August 29th. This is what's coming is the invasion season. So the invasion event occurs daily in two of the hard infiltration operation dungeons. So two of the missions we're usually going for the hard amorphous materials in are going to be invasion dungeons instead. And they're going to change these every day. So it's going to be two rotating dungeons every day. And you could clear both dungeons two times each that day. So four clears a day is going to be like your quota, your dailies. And and that should be how you're going to be unlocking these inversion reinforcement things. So I don't know if it's going to be RNG or what. This inversion reinforcer for season progression part actually sounds really cool. So these are the different types of things that you're going to be able to upgrade. So you're going to pick three of these. So Hunt improved the Ascendant's basic stats. I don't know if this is going to be damage or anything, but I'm guessing this is just going to be like the little wheel you could see when you look at your Descendant. So like, you know, defense, health, stuff like that. But also the fact that this is basic stats. So that has potential to boost your base crit rate or things like that. And if you could boost your base crit rate, then all mods added on top of that crit rate will actually do something now so like how glay has five percent base crit rate if you could boost her base crit rate now when you put crit mods on her they would actually do something good you know because right now the, like the most you could get her base crit rate is around 15 percent without a luna buff depending on which basic stats they mean the hunt one's probably going to be the best one but yeah attribute resistance recovery this is probably mp recovery health recovery shield recovery you know all those things survival receive defense buff that activates under certain conditions this just sounds kind of like what your mods are, are already you know like your shield is empty your defense goes up so yeah these don't seem like they're going to be like the most important things ever i don't i doubt they're going to be super game changing my best guess is people are just going to run a basic stat one recovery and then whatever is like fun for the invasion dungeons and then maybe against like the harder bosses you know gluttony and the new boss some attribute resistance ones but but for the most part, I don't think we have challenging enough content in the game when you have a fully built descendant for these things to be that important. So most of the time I see us all going for things that, that just improve the time that we could do things. So anything that's going to give us more damage or range or something, you know? Because currently, if you have like a fully kitted descendant and a fully kitted gun, the only real challenge in the game is gluttony still. Yeah, the inversion reinforcement is a progression system that lasts for the season. You could use three of the effects that have been unlocked, and when you unlock all four of the effects in a line, you automatically acquire the collection effect. 
So the collection effects are passives that are always applied during the season, meaning that you unlock all inversion reinforcement effects, you utilize three selected effects, and five collection effects from each line in battle. So we're going to end up with five passives when you like completely finish all of this, and then you're going to pick three effects. So as far as I could tell, what this is going to mean is that you'll pick one send into basic stats. Let's say one increases HP, one defense, one could be shield, one could be your max MP. Hopefully one of them is skill crit rate, but then everybody's going to probably pick skill crit rate at that point. And then the attribute one obviously is just going to be the all of the different attributes in the game. Descendant recovery, I definitely could just assume is going to be HP, MP, and shields. But this part of the season seems to be like the most exciting and like kind of the biggest change to the game. And this part is coming right away with the new update. So, but yeah, so we're probably going to get four of these per a day. Uh, I wonder if there's going to be any like FOMO with that, where if you end up missing a day, if you're not going to be able to get a certain ability. So if it is RNG, then some people are going to get really good ones really fast and other people are going to be just like stuck behind for a while. But if it's not RNG and then the dungeon rotates and now you're going to have to wait until it rotates back to the dungeons you missed to get those abilities is definitely going to like bring you onto the game to get you to do these dailies a lot. So, so that could be actually really good for the population and stuff. We'll see. It says invasion dungeons will put your skills and wits to the test to hold back the descendants. Corral has built a defense system with different mechanisms for each legion. These dungeons are solo challenges that feature different routes, puzzles, and strategies from the normal dungeons where your objective is to fend off the invasion as quickly as possible. I wonder if when it says different routes and puzzles and strategies and stuff, if like the routes are like a choice or if like it just like randomly generates a different way for you to go or something. But also the part where it says the invasion as quickly as possible. So hopefully that would mean there's unique rewards for doing it faster or something. We'll also be getting the Excava. I don't know how to say this. AR, a powerful and versatile ultimate weapon. This assault rifle arrives with the update from the battle pass. So this one charges a voltage when attacking enemies and uses the charge voltage to fire energy grenades. It seems like that's two weapons in a row now where they're playing into this use the weapon to fire off like a perk. So this is definitely reminding me of like when Destiny started doing that on Glay, unless it's fire rates really high, I don't really see it mattering. And against mobs and stuff, like, oh, you could get an energy grenade or you could just be bunny. I bring bunny up every two seconds because 99% of everything in the game, it's like, or bunny, or just bunny, or, you know? But also, like, that has to compete with Thunder Cage, which will just cause explosions on every single kill so the grenades would have to do a lot of damage or they would have to have a really really large blast radius to compete with under gauge but who knows it could be fun frost watcher is the scout rifle that is going to come out in the next update so in september 26 we're gonna get the frost watcher which is a scout rifle reduces enemy chill resistance increases your chill skill damage each time you hit the enemy at long range perfect weapon for yet Perfect weapon for Viesa or Haley, who use chill attribute skills, so like a long range clairvoyance. Then we'll be getting Deathstalker, the interceptor from the trailer. That one actually does look really cool. Uh, Deathstalker emerges from the darkness, unleashes attacks based on poison and fear. Stalking the descendants in the darkness of the void, Deathstalker is more formidable than any Colossus you've intercepted. That interceptor fight does actually look really cool. And then the only other thing we're getting in that update is going to be some new skins as well. The final update here is the thing I was most excited about. So season one, the highest difficulty of the operations will be added. Prove the strength of the descendants acquire loot that can only be obtained in more difficult infiltration operations. So I don't know what that will be, but since this is a higher difficulty and hard mode is where we got level 100 gear, that potentially could be higher level gear. Along with this, Mysterious Merchant, ETA Zero, visits Albion. So this is gonna be our Xur. He has ex an exclusive currency and he comes with blueprints for descendants, ultimate weapons, and occasionally hard to find consumables. No idea what that means, honestly. Like the hardest to find consumables is just kind of like code breakers, but we'll have a ton by then. So that's all of the new stuff coming, but there are also some improvements coming to the game. So the void fragment and fusion reactor loop is going to be better. We are going to get the exact amount of materials from doing one single void fragment farm for the fusion reactor itself so you do a void fragment and you could afford to do the reactor instead of having to farm 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 uh, it also says void shards required for the fusion reactor have been consolidated into a single type now the same type of void shards will drop from both void fragments and the fusion reactor within the same battlefield i don't know what that means honestly that seems translated a little weird I, that's kind of confusing 
This change enhances the convenience of farming void shards to optimize the monster placement for representative void fragments of each attribute. Yeah, I don't really, I don't fully understand what it means by that. Like the shards will drop from the reactor itself as well, or I don't even know. But then it also says fusion reactor requires void shards when using the reconstructed device rather than the start of the mission. That is definitely going to make the whole farming thing where you abandon a lot easier. So the, so the yellow enemies from fusion reactors drop outpost materials. So you'll be able to just farm the outpost materials really fast now. And then all you have to do is not use the reconstructed device and you're going to be able to just get the materials. So they're going to make the hard infiltrations like modifiers a lot better. So it's going to be 0%, 125 to 50%. And if you, if you choose the same preset, you could do public matchmaking for the hard mode infiltrations now. So that's just like the dungeon things uh, that will be so much more convenient. Literally within like the first week of the game, I tried one where we turned off grapple and jump and we got stuck. We couldn't even finish the dungeon. And also, if you're using matchmaking, you and the other people could choose a different reward. I hope they somehow implement that into our party, too, to where, like, if you bring a party, you could all select a different amorphous material so that you guys could go through dungeons together and both be getting things you want. And then this change here is one of the best new changes coming to the game. So your socket type, now when you assign a socket type to your weapon or your character, if you make it two different types or whatever, you could change those types. So you could make it like the V, the M, the R, the X, whatever. You can make it to where you could put any of those on it instead. Hopefully it is retroactive because I have re-catalyzed my Glay so many times. But if it's not, whatever. But that is going to be so much more convenient. That is going to make it so you can make multiple builds so much easier. And you're not going to have to like build around trying to make sure it works for both mobbing and bossing and stuff. You could just separate them and it'll be great. And then on your guns, you could also set it up to where you could use whatever element you want instead of being locked to one element. So that change is going to be awesome. Really hope it's retroactive. And I'm wondering if you could change it to a blank one too. But if you could, they might as well just remove the negative that happens when you put a mod in the wrong slot type. Because if they do let us change it to like be a flat one again, then that's just completely pointless anyway. They're finally fixing Jaber. So his turrets, I guess, have been busted this whole time. And skill power modifier and additional attack and stuff didn't work for Jaber's turrets, and now they will, so we'll actually be able to see how good Jaber could actually be. Blair seems to be getting a lot of buffs. I don't play Blair, so I have no idea how good these are, but yeah, Pitmaster skill has been improved to have a more enhanced effect based on the number of flame zones. Duration of blaze up has been increased. MP cost has been reduced. When using the extinguish skill, the flame zone will no longer be retrieved. Instead, the taste of aggression effect will stack based on the number of flame zones. The damage of the burn taste skill has been increased and a skill button input feature has been added, so that's like Luna, to allow canceling the skill mid-use. Additionally, the max stacks of the incinerary bomb modification module has been increased and the performance of the deadly cuisine skill has been enhanced when the classic chef modification module is equipped. So Blair got a lot of buffs. That's like, that's, that's a lot of different buffs at once there. So hopefully that makes him really good. I have no idea though. And then Ajax, Orbital Barrier, Hypercube skills now affected by Attribute Resistance, making them stronger. Body Enhancement Modification Module increases HP, Defense, and Shield when using these skills. Void Energy will always recover to 100%, allowing the use of Enhanced skills more often. That sounds really, really good. I think, like, that might make Ajax really good if you could just constantly spam your Enhanced skills. That sounds pretty awesome. Additionally, the Void Charge modification module will allow the Void Walk skill to be stacked and the Void Walk and Explosion skills have been modified to increase damage based on defense. When using an enhanced skill, the cooldown will now reset. Uh, these buffs for Blair and Ajax actually do sound really good. Uh, and then a bunch of random UI improvements, like you're going to be able to use like shapes and stuff. And then the junk filter is going to be better where you could like select, oh, I don't want sub attack. So uh, you could just delete any reactor that rolls sub attack easily. And you're also going to be able to dismantle well in combat, like, thank you. I've been complaining about that constantly. I'm trying to dismantle, and you start getting shot, and then you can't dismantle, and you have to exit and run away, and then, ugh. We're one of the most annoying things. They're fixing that, finally. So, yeah, that is all of the new info and new stuff that's happening with the new seasons. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think. I, for one, am really looking forward to to the inversion reinforcer thing and mostly the higher difficulty infiltration operations but those are not going to be for a while all the way october 30th so it's quite a long time until those come out but yeah see you guys next time peace